welcome to the Self Project Podcast. I'm your host, Christy Martin. I'm a transformation and human design guide who is passionate about guiding women to be the most authentic versions of themselves. This podcast is all about self-discovery, self-empowerment, wellness, healing, parenting, mental health, spirituality, you name it, we're going to talk about it. This podcast and this space is all about helping you along on your own self-project journey. So welcome. Let's sit back and we'll dive right in today. Welcome back to the show today, and I am really excited to be able to have on today Shifra Malka. And Shifra is an author. She's the vice president of a writing and communications company, and she's also a woman speak circle leader, which she just spent some time a few minutes ago telling me about, and it sounds absolutely incredible. So I hope that she will share more about that with us again, because it. um well, I'll tell, I'll tell you what it reminded me of after you share it again. But um, Shifra, again, thank you for giving your time, for being here today, um, for being able to connect with me, with our audience. If you didn't mind, will you just uh, share more about yourself with us again? Um, share again uh, what it was that you were telling me about the Women Speak Circle Leader and you know being an author and all of those things. Christy, I'm delighted to join you today. I would love to talk about all of those things. So my background is in communications. I serve as vice president of a writing and communications company that serves the writing needs and messaging needs of individuals, organizations, and nonprofits. Most recently, I wrote a book. It was published this past winter. It's called Dare to Matter, Lessons in Living a Large Life. And just so that you know, this was not the book I started to write. This is the book that got written. So any aspiring authors and established authors will readily appreciate what I just said, because um, it really was meant to be a book of interviews that I had done as a radio host and producer a while back. And I really wanted to share some of the uh, some of the ideas that had either entertained me, informed me, inspired me, moved me in some way. And um, when I sat down to do that, that is not the story that came. So the story that came was a deeply personal story about messages of not mattering that were directed at me very early on and very intensely. And um, that how it shut me down and how I um, worked to rebuild that inner space that I call mattering. So, the, you know, this is a story that has a lot of elements to it. It was just, it's, there is a component of an eating disorder that I had, but that's not the main story. There's a lot about mothering in there. And that's a, an important piece of the story but it's not the story. The story that got me to come and write it, um, despite my many objections around doing it, because it, just so that you know, and you could you could imagine that I was really um, giving away my privacy in doing it. So the why I did it is a different conversation, but I did do it. And um, it, it, the, the thing that got me to write it was these, this, the pain around the not mattering. That was the deep pain I was standing in and sometimes continue to stand in. And we know that sometimes or very often pain is the most eloquent speaker. So that is what happened with the book. Uh, since that, since then, as I was looking to expand the messaging around it all, I trained as a woman speak circle leader. Women Speak is an organization that it, it is devoted to the art and soul of public speaking. That doesn't mean that you want to be a public speaker. And uh, this training is a very, it's a deeply meaningful uh, space where women come and they are held in a very safe place and in a very deep place. It is, it is a very unique culture in that certain principles I'll just share with you um, 
we do not criticize. There's no such thing as criticism. There is celebration. There is, women are wildly celebrated. Every woman that is part of a circle really is entitled, is entitled. It is her right to be celebrated for showing up and taking on her life in a very deep and meaningful way. She will learn, there's a a whole curriculum around it. She will learn many things. She will learn what is important to her, what her deeply held beliefs are, how, what she wants to take a stand around uh, in her home, in her life and in the world, and then how to do all of that. We do not offer, as I said, criticism or feedback. We give uh, refinements because we believe that there's, there's no, there's nothing wrong in your message. We're just going to find the strengths and we're going to build on those strengths. And, um, so that is what I am currently, um, offering. And, uh, I can give you some information about that later, how people can reach me to find out more. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. We'll have to have that. I was thinking, um, when you were talking kind of like Toastmasters, but this feels like, like it goes even beyond that though. And you talk about like that safe container, like you know, it's more than just like the speaking and the, uh, you know, the building of the skills and that it feels like. The, you know, I, I went to Toastmasters so I can comment. Um, Toastmasters was very helpful for me at a certain part in my life. The difference is that number one, this is for women only. It's for women. There is a there is a, rec- a recognition that women's strengths, um, women's strengths are there are different, and they need to be cultivated differently, and to be groomed for how we use them in in our lives. And the women leadership, which is emerging and is being called forth, um, we need to show up into that. We want to show up into that. We're ready to show up into that. We just, we need to be cultivated. We need some support in putting it all together so that we can go out there and influence those whom we are meant to influence. Mm, I have goosebumps. I love the way that you put that because I feel like only within uh, the last few years have I even, gosh, only really within this last year have I gotten comfortable even beginning to kind of use my voice or share it at all. Um, This podcast that I have right here has been a huge container in the last year in which I've used to grow my voice and to get comfortable sharing and to go through the awkward you know, walk through that awkward, all the mindset stuff of like, what am I even talking about? Why am I even showing up? Like all these fears that we have that, um, what am I trying to say here? I'll, you yeah, know. you know, I, I know, I know what you're trying to say because number one, our voice is who we are at our core. And, um, if we were lucky enough to have people in our orbit growing up, in our family, in our friends, in our schools, right? In our, in whatever settings we were. And people who said, we want to hear what you have to say. It's important. It matters. Then we won't have to um, heal all of those scars in order to move forward. We'll be able to, the starting point is much, it's much more, um, is much, is much further ahead. But for some of us, like myself, we're, Our voices were literally shut down by being told, don't listen to her. We don't want to hear what you have to say. It's not important. What are you talking about? You don't know what you're talking about. Uh, There is a lot of healing that has to happen before we're going to even, before we're going to even allow ourselves to, to move it all forward and to begin to believe that what we have to say, in fact, matters very much. And that if we don't say it, if we don't say what we're here to say, who's going to say it? And no one's going to, even if somebody else says it, they're not going to say it as well, as well as we can, because we bring, we each bring something very singular to, in our voice. No two voices are alike, not the way they sound audibly and not the way, and not the way they resonate internally. 
So we don't have the right to say, well, you know, what we have to say doesn't matter. We don't know who we're, who we needed to have affected. And by not showing up, we shut them down and they couldn't move forward. We, we don't know. We don't, we're not privy to that information, but it, it happens as we move along. I love that. Said so eloquently. Sounds like I could use part of the circle. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. What am I trying to say? <laughs> so, and I love that that space is being offered. And I love that, you know, you mentioned that it's just for women because um, like you say, we do uh, deal with these different challenges too, just as women in society. And you said the, you know, the way that we've all been conditioned and, you know, the patriarchy and all of, you know, these things and using your voice as a woman within, you know, I would say the corporate world or the, um, any of the powers that be any of, you know, you know, Christy, I want to say, I want to say two things. Number one is that no one's trying to replace the men. Men are very important people in this world, but, um, or end, there's um, there's an adjunct to the what they have been able to do in this world. And, you know, to some extent, we have to come and heal some of the things that have been done, not wittingly, not meaning, not meaningly. Um, and as we build together, it's going to take multiple energies on different fronts to heal and build this world. And um, the other thing I wanted to just say about Toastmaster is that you know, if you're familiar with Toastmaster, you know that they do something called tabletops. And when I would get up to do tabletops, which is basically you're given a topic and you just have to speak off the cuff extemporaneously, which I am not really good at. And I literally couldn't put two words together and which was very surprising for anyone who knows me, right? I can put a few words together fast. Um, so I watched that and I observed in women speak what the dynamic was and how I was able to show up. And I have to tell you that I was able to experience firsthand, which is why I am offering it now. I believe that much in it. That's incredible. So you saw the difference in like yourself between the programs, just your. I would never offer anything to anybody that I myself did not experience. It's just, just not authentic and I can't do it. It's not, I don't have it in, within me. Mm, incredible. So you are going to have to tell us about that. I want to kind of come back to your book though, because I, I love the idea of daring to matter. And, um, you know, I wrote down a note of like uh, learning to rebuild this inner space, right? Because those messages as we're growing up as we're experiencing life, even as adults, um, they're, you know, affecting us. We're taking that in subconsciously. So like, what, what were some of the, the things that like you had to do or some of the ways that you were able to kind of start rebuilding that space for yourself and start, you know, showing yourself that you did matter? I will say that, so first of all, there's this story, 340 pages of it. But then at the end of the book, I have the objective lessons that I call matterings. And these matterings are at least 200 sayings or um, ideas that, um, that I lifted out of my personal story so that they can be used in the lives of others. So this sense of mattering of whether it, it really defines how we show up into our lives, if we show up into our lives, whether we opt in or we opt out. And it's not something, what I learned is that nobody can hand you your mattering. You can't buy it, you can't borrow it, but you can build it. And um, it's built in steps. One of my lines is small steps big strides. And this will show up in every facet it did in my life. So number one, in the way I eat, because I tell the story of an eating disorder. The way I eat is the way I did life. And it still is. Um, but it's much healthier, right? Um, the way I parent, I drastically shifted and adjusted my mode of parenting when I was parenting my children. It was a constant um, struggle within myself. But my line was, 
actually with my first few children, I would say, God, please don't let me destroy my children. I was so, so terrified that I would destroy my children. Now, then I had a few other children and the younger ones. And then my, I will tell you, my prayer shifted and it was, please, God, don't let my children destroy me. <laughs> and that's how things shifted. But, um, but it's in every facet. It was in the, the careers that I considered and didn't consider, right? And it was, um, it was in, in every facet, whether we feel the right to be heard and to, um, and to participate and to build. So an example of something that's it, I'm trying to think of something very specific. Um, I'm turning to my matterings now and um, I'll, I'll read this to you. Um, if something matters to you, it must take, take up space and consume emotion. It must have a way of being seen, heard, felt, touched, and smelled. And by the choices we make, we know what matters to us. We don't get to know what matters until we see what we choose because no one can have everything at the same time. We have to make those choices. And that is what will tell us and others what really matters to us. Where did we spend our money today? Where did we spend our time today? That is really powerful. Extremely powerful. Um, you know, just, you know, I was thinking of just a uh, kind of an example of myself with my kids before COVID, um, you know, it's, we were busy on the go all the time in sports. I have five boys. So I laughed when you're like, it's switched to like, don't let them destroy me. And I'm like, yep. <laughs> like, don't let us destroy each other. Um, but, uh, you know, just kind of flipping from this, um, I'm just thinking of myself the other day, my boys asked me like, will you go swimming with us? And I was like, I had all these things to do, right? All these things to do for work. I'm like, I need to clean the house. But it's it's been able to make that mindset shift that I feel like really started for me, you know, back at the beginning of COVID when we all were kind of coming to a halt and kind of shifting priorities and, and things like that. But it, it was kind of that ability to be able to say like, you know what? Yes. Like I've, I tote family values and like spending time with my kids, but then it's like, you know, when we would get home before, I'd be so exhausted from running, running. It was just like, no, I don't want to swim with you. And and so now it was those things. It's like, do I value getting these other things done or do I value that time with my kids? Like what is more important? And so, you know, that just made me think of that example of like choosing to go swimming with them because that was important to me rather than like having a clean house or getting the laundry done or, you know, those different things. So that's kind of what popped up for me and how I've been able to shift those things. Like, okay, you know, family values and family is something that's important to me. Am I, am I doing that? You know, yeah, so you have a compass already around that all. And clearly that's guiding you and you're, you're in touch with that, which is so valuable. Good for you. But it wasn't always that way, <laughs> you know, and so I think it's that way for everybody. Like you said, this, these things take, um, you know, time to build sometimes time to even know what your values are. I felt like there's such a long time. I'm just like, what are my values even, you know, who am I even? Because sometimes, um, well, I feel like our identity can, you know, be wrapped up in our values, like our self identity. Absolutely. And, you know, Christy, I had this conversation with somebody on Sunday, a very long conversation, with a father of at least, I think, 10 children. And um, we talked about core identity and, you know, how in this culture, it's very complicated to uh, have a core identity outside of something superficial, right? It's the car you drive. It's the house you live in. We've really 
mixed it up. <laughs> we've mixed it up and we've mixed ourselves up and we've impoverished ourselves. It's not to say that we can't have a nice car and a beautiful home. That's nothing to do with it. That's irrelevant to the discussion. It is where we will allow ourselves to define ourselves and others to define us. And it takes a tremendous amount of fortitude, inner fortitude and mattering to really build against all of this, to do the pushback against all of this. You know, if it, and but there are prizes to that, by the way. There, it's, a, it's a difficult process. I think the pandemic allowed us to see that we can, it was against our will, we were called into the process which is, by the way, a lot of times how we are called into growth because growth is not comfortable. We are called into it against our, our will. But once we move through it and we get we go through it and, and past it, we've come out with some prizes that we would not exchange. We would not exchange them. We wouldn't have asked for them, but we wouldn't exchange them now. There are prizes to doing a process. Yeah, you know, I, you know what, right. And I, t I use the word, I talk about when I was, when my children were younger, I would say, there's only one thing you need to know, and that is patience. If you will develop the capacity for patience, you will get anything in your life that you want, that you really want. Because develop, because capacity, enlarging and expanding our capacity for something requires work. But once you do that work, you can then receive that which you want. We may not have the capacity today and tomorrow to receive that which we say we want. But when we build the capacity to receive it, we're going to get it. We're going to get it in some form. And, you know, patience is one of those examples. If we don't have the patience, if we don't build our patience, um, we're not going to be able to follow through on certain things that we need to in order to get where to, to where we want to go. I love that. Um, I, I thought of the example. I'm like, yes, I always say I want an Instagram following of like 100,000 people. But then I'm like, yes, but then you're scared to like show up to, you know, even your 1700, you're scared to show up live. And every time, you know, somebody adds, it's like that, oh my gosh, more people. So it kind of made me laugh where it's like enlarging your capacity. That's why you haven't brought, you know, been brought that 100,000 people because you're gaining the skills and all the different uh, things and the healing that you need to go through and the different things that you need to build on your way to get there. So it kind of always makes me chuckle where I'm like, I want a huge following, but then I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. And then we say, well, do we really want it? If we really wanted it, we would do this and this. And, th and that's not to say that there aren't things it blocking us that are real blocks and we have to overcome them, right? Maybe we're scared on some level to have so many people showing up to our lives. Maybe it's a breach of privacy that we're not willing to put up with. So here's lots of questions and things in our way, but the more conscious we become of them, the more clear we become of what we really do want in our lives, the more we can, not, we can manifest it. Mm, I love that. It's self-awareness. Self-awareness is so huge. Um, the other thing that I picked up on that you had said is like, uh, choosing whether to like opt in or opt out of life, because I think of my, my own journey and, um, you know, there were so many points where I feel like it kind of almost cycled where, uh, you know, as opting out for a while. And then, like you said, there's usually some kind of event or something that really shakes things up that kind of opens up your eyes or, you know, gives you those shifts that you need. And then it was all of a sudden, it was like, wait a minute, what have I been doing my entire life? Like I'm ready to opt in. Um, and it's just been kind of like fire from there, you know, like, like I'm here for it. No, I'm here for life. So um, I think that, you know, we, we can go through stages with that too, you know, different. And, it's, and it's a continuum. Yes. The continuum of, you know, opting, okay, I'll opt in today to yeah. run for 20 minutes, but don't have me run for 40 minutes, right? 
But maybe next week I will opt in for that because I'll be stronger. My capacity will have expanded. And yes, life life does shift us around. And 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 what we what was hard for us at one point would be very easy for us. And maybe some things have become hard, you know. So it's there's always a give and take, but opting in with a spirit of hope, with a spirit of power. Today I just posted something on my social media that um that it is that the only uh that the only how did I write it? The, the thing that's within our power is the power within. It's the only thing. And that is about letting our light out and sharing it with the world. And if we don't do it, no one else can do it for us. We spoke a little bit about that before. That power within is really that inner landscape that we were discussing. That is where the power is. It is where the power is or isn't. It's where it lives or dies. And, you know, focusing on that inner landscape. I grew up in a climate of um, a lot of hopelessness, a lot of expectation, but with a, a feeling of, but you can never, you'll never make it. Like we expect you to make it, but we know you can never make it. I was, I was tied in knots, as in N-O-T. I cannot do this. I cannot do that. And so there was an expectation and I knew there was it generated a complete sense of powerlessness for me today. I need to stand and remind myself to stand in my power. There's no powerlessness. Who, who took that away from me? That's not anybody's right to take my power away from me. And why am I doing it for them? Opting in is opting in to believe that you have that power and you will learn to use it well and God or creator or whoever you rely on in this life will help you. He will show up at your side. He has a vested interest. He didn't create us for nothing. He wants us to do things here. Mm, so powerful, such a powerful message. I always show up before these and um, have a small little ritual where, yeah, I just am like, okay, bring in, bring in what needs to come into the conversation today. Like, you know, full of nerves and everything. I show up to these with a deep breath. Like what's the message that needs to be brought to the world, you know, between us today. So, um, and yes. Mm, I love that you guys teach that and incorporate that in there. Um, yeah, because that always just helps me. Uh, it's yeah, it just helps me show up in a different way and kind of get out of my head, get out of the way, whatever needs to come through is going to come through. Um, and that's been really helpful in, in helping just build my self confidence as well. Um, so just everything that you've been sharing with us today is incredible. I feel like we have an episode packed full of so much wisdom. <laughs> like I can't wait to go back there and listen myself. Um, in the meet, but but let us know where are we able to buy your book at? Is it on Amazon or your website? So my website is shiframalka.com and I'll just spell that for you. S H I F R A M A L K A. You could also go to dare to matter.com. It'll take you there, but the book is available everywhere. It, Amazon and Barnes and Nobles and in some libraries, if the, if the library doesn't have it, ask them, request it. It's called dare to matter lessons in living a large life. Um, on my website, you could, you could sample the, uh, uh, the audio book because it's in three formats. It's in the audio book, it's in the ebook, and it's in the hard, uh, in the paperback. So if you go to my site, you'll be able to look at it, sample it. You'll be able to see the book trailer, which is 180 seconds of a very powerful message that I recorded myself. And um, yeah. 
That's incredible. Everything will be linked down in show notes. So you'll be able to go straight to the website. You can scroll down. Um, and do you have any social media that we're able to follow you on as well? Any Instagram? Yes. So Facebook, you can do uh, Shifra Malka and Dare to Matter. Um, and Twitter, I believe, is at Shifra Malka. And Instagram is at Dare to Matter. I think. <laughs> uh, yeah. And, uh, I'll, and, and we're actually updating my website soon to reflect the women speak offerings and you'll be able to go straight there and see everything about that as well. Awesome. Yeah. That was what I was going to ask next. I was going to say, okay, so where are we able to, uh, <laughs> find that as well? So, um, I just have to thank you again for being here today, for giving your time as we kind of close the show out. Is there anything else that you uh, wanted to kind of share with us or felt kind of called to leave us with. Thank you. I, I like to say what's so important to me inside of me is until your light shines bright, this world is not whole. And we're going for a whole world here, everybody. We need to do it together. If you matter, I matter. That's the magic. When I matter, I'm able to invite you into your own mattering, into your own greatness. And if we're not here to be great, then what are we here for? So yes, until your light shines bright, this world is not whole. Mm, that's a beautiful message. Shifra, thank you so much for being here with us today, for sharing. It was a pleasure to have you on. So please, if you're listening, connect with us. Let us know your takeaways from the episode. We would love to hear from you. Thank you, Christy. It's a pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to speak with you. Thank you for joining me today for the Self Project Podcast. Come and connect with me over on Instagram at underscore Christy Martin and let me know what your takeaways were and what you want to hear more of. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss any of these awesome episodes. Leave a review if you love the show and I will see you next time.